Hi, this is Chip Diller, Pro Staff with ThermalHunting.com. We talked about this before, but I wanted to, to revisit a couple of topics that are important to me and that should be important to anyone starting out in night hunting. And it's, some of these topics I'm going to cover are also relevant to day hunting or applicable to day hunting. The topics are safety, stand setup, and just learning the property. Because when you're, especially for the night hunters who have just purchased either a thermal scope or a night vision scope and they're venturing out, <clears throat> it's always better to look at the property in the daytime before you go out and start night hunting. Now, now that's not always possible, but because logistically, if you're having to drive 30, 40 miles to go to a place, I typically will want to get there about 3.30 or 4 this time of year. Try to get there an hour before daylight, before sunset, and just look at the property with the landowner. Now, some of the things that I've jotted down, and, and like I said, we've covered this before on the page, on the Alabama Coyote Hunters page, but I want to revisit a few things. First of all, you want to know where all occupied and unoccupied buildings are in the area. You want to know where any, uh, any house, uh, which includes trailers, any barn, which could possibly include livestock, and even the unoccupied buildings. We don't want to be shooting in that direction either. You want to know where all the public roads are located. So we, we need to be careful about not shooting across public roads. You want to know if there's any loose dogs or cats that you may encounter while hunting and ask if they can be secured. I went to a place last night and when I first got there and met the landowner, there were three dogs out. And I asked, are these dogs going to be out tonight? Can they be put up? And they did. They put those dogs up for me, which is very helpful. But even if they can't put the dogs up, as long as you know they're there, you're going to take extra caution in not, uh, you know, shooting at the, the the dog or the cat. Cats are a little tricky. There's been a few times I've been at places where they didn't tell me they had cats out, and I saw cats. And cats are not, they're a little tricky at distances about what they could be. Um, Sometimes they'll look like a bobcat. You'll, you'll typically get the tail in there. I hunted a place that had probably 15 catfish ponds recently, and they probably had eight cats that were loose out there, and I just got used to seeing what they looked like. You want to know where all the livestock are located. Now, cows are easily seen with thermal, so you won't get... It's very, very hard to mistake a cow for a coyote or a pig. But a calf is a different story. A small calf can be about the size of a coyote. So be, be very, very sure of what you're shooting at. Uh, ask the landowner about the location of any known holes or ditches that may present a tripping hazard to you. I was out with... Uh, Another, another fellow hunter a few weeks back, and we're walking across a cow pasture. It was Jeremy King, and he, he stepped in a hole and, and fell. And it could have easily been me by myself because I hunt a lot alone. And I have, I've fallen a couple of times, once in a hole, once uh, tripped across a log that was in the road. So just be aware of where if the, ask the, the farmer or the landowner, are there, any, are there any holes out here in this field that I may encounter? Ask if the adjoining neighbors have been notified about your hunting. But you don't, what you don't want is someone calling the game warden and saying they're hearing shots fired when they could have been notified by the landowner on the land that you're hunting on. They could have been notified by them that you're gonna be hunting there and so when they hear shots, they're not going to think it's somebody that doesn't have permission. Ask if there's any fences that are electrified. I found this out the hard way. 
one night uh, hunting on a particular property. I said I'd already killed one coyote, and there was two more that were out there, and I was trying to get to them. And I said, well, I'll just cross this fence right here. It's going to be a lot easier than having to go down to a gate. Well, I grabbed that fence and started stepping over, and I got a little bit of juice. So just know if they're electrified. Use caution when climbing gates and fences. Make sure that your firearms are safely positioned or secured before climbing. There are, when I talk about climbing gates, I climb a lot of gates because of the noise that sometimes the chains make, the connectors for the gates, or when the gate swings up and it creaks. So there's a lot of times where I'll just climb over. And I, I sling my gun on my back. I know a lot of guys will secure their gun to their tripod as soon as they get out of the truck and they're carrying their tripod, which is a fine way to do it. I think most people do it that way. It's just not the way that I do it. But So it's easier for me to just climb over a gate with my gun on my back than, plus I'm not very tall. So some, some gates and fences are uh, a little, little tall for me. If you're hunting with a partner, discuss target selection before activating the e-collar. In other words, the hunter on the left is going to target the coyote on the left. The hunter on the right is going to shoot the coyote on the right if you've got multiples. And if we've talked about this before, if they cross when they're on the way to you, if they cross, then the, the guy on the left is going to pick up that one that's crossed to the left. So you're going to always be, if you're on the left, you're going to always be on the coyote that's on the left before you start shooting. Know what your count is going to be when you shoot. Some guys do a three, two, one shoot. Some guys do a one, two, three shoot. Some guys do a one, two, and shoot on three. And unfortunately, some guys <laughs> early shoot other guys, and they'll shoot on two when they're supposed to shoot on three or shoot on one and a half. And we give each other a hard time online about, about doing that. If you're hunting with a partner, discuss your swing limits about how far each shooter can safely pivot in each direction without endangering his partner. You wanna set up close enough to where you hear each other while whispering. So I've got my tripod right here. I'll set up, if I'm hunting with someone else, whether they're on this side or this side, let's just say for our purposes, I'm on the right, the other shooter is on the left. He's gonna set his tripod up where it's almost touching, if not touching mine at the bottom, that will be close enough. And then when you're swinging, before you start hunting, know where, just pick out a spot out there and just know I'm not going to swing past this point right here because of the safety of my partner. So know where that limit is going to be on either side. And this is also you're taking into account where the structures are, where the roads are where the livestock is. There's a lot of things that, that you've got to consider before you start, before you flip that safety off and start pulling the trigger. There was one known hunting, ex hunting accident this year, this season, where it was another state where some guys were shooting hogs and there was at least, I think three of them were hunting. And when the, the hogs started running and all the excitement, one of the guys pivoted and wound up shooting another his fellow hunter in the in the back shoulder. Now that can't happen if you're close enough the, the setting up the way that I'm talking about. And not everyone shoots suppressed. I encourage everyone to shoot suppressed and I, and I know it's another expense you've got to uh, absorb when you're when you're hunting but it's not only for your ears benefit it's for the benefit of your fellow hunters and also to, to keep the sound, the, the report of the gun down, dampen the noise for the landowner. Then if, if an outside, this is, this is something that's happened a couple of times. If an outside party approaches or appears, so you've, you've, you've out there and you've shot a few times. Somebody comes out of their house with a light or, or has called the police. Always have a headlight on that you can turn on when somebody's approaching you. You want to be visible to any party that's approaching you, whether it's law enforcement 
or a neighbor. I always have a headlight on so I can flip that light on and shine it pretty brightly to, to let them know where I am. And if you have to, you can start shouting. I believe some of the e-callers have a sound file on them that says, hey, I'm a hunter, you know, don't shoot. I, I have never used it, but uh, I think it might have been Matt Glenn telling me about that. As always, this is another thing, notify your landowners before arriving. Some of my landowners, most of them are text, and that's the easiest way to communicate with them and less disruptive to them to say, hey, is it okay if I come hunt tonight? And they usually reply back immediately and say, yes, it's fine. But there may be, maybe they have a family event going on that night. They don't want you to round. So if some of the guys don't text, maybe they're older, so you need to call them and just let them know you're coming. And for them to notify their adjoining neighbors that you're going to be hunting that night. Also, you know, close all your gates when you're entering and exiting. Don't leave any gates open that livestock could get out. And don't leave any trash on the, on the property. You don't want to leave anything but maybe a few spent casings that you can't find or, or your footprints. That's all you want to leave. And some dead coyotes. Uh, exercise care and not damaging any of their roads or pastures with your vehicle. Walk as much as possible. I walk a lot. So I tend to park up near the house or the barn. And if, the, if I've got a half mile walk, I don't, that's nothing because I spot a lot of coyotes when I'm walking either to or from a stand. And that's where that handheld scanner comes back into play that I've talked about all the time, about I wouldn't kill half the coyotes I kill if I didn't have a, a handheld scanner. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I just wanted to make sure we were covering all the, the safety points. Now, one other thing is whether you ride hot or not in, a, in, a, in your truck. And by hot, I mean, you, do you have a round chambered? I'm not a stickler on it because I hunt alone so much. There are guys that are sticklers, and that's fine. And, you know, be, be safe. It depends also where your gun is stored in your truck. Now, when I hunt with other people, and we sometimes have to lay a gun down the back in the back of the truck, we're very aware if it's a loaded weapon that it's back there, and we're, we're, we're not, nobody's in the line of fire when guns are being touched. So just be aware if you've got live rounds in your gun. Uh, like I said, I'm not a stickler on, on whether you ride hot or not when you're, you know, when you're hunting that night. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do that for, there's a lot of guys that have just gotten into thermal, into night hunting and, and using night vision. So let's all be safe out there. Let's all take due care in protecting the landowners or the cattlemen's livestock and let's just let's just stay safe and don't get hurt come see us in warrior alabama for all your scopes scanners tripods and drone needs and also we've got these uh, magnets available as well to put on the back of your vehicle this could possibly avoid a confrontation with law enforcement or game warden or an angry neighbor so these are available for purchase, and everything is available for purchase on the website, thermalhunting.com. We'd like to thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.